I think it'd be a better idea if, if we would just build it for you right here and, and you could see something about it. Can we it's see this being built? Well, matter, all right, I let's put so. it together. Welcome to this episode of Design Talk by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my newest design, and I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks to use in your own design process. So one of the first things I like to do when I start to design is to sketch out my basic shape, which you can kind of see that I've done here. To do that, I like to use either a pen or a pencil. One of my favorite pens is the... Uh, Pilot Precise series here and one of the reasons I like these, and I'll have a link to these down below, is it comes with a very fine tip, very little bleed through, however very very smooth on the paper and that's what's critical because again when I'm sketching it's really ad hoc drawing, it's just what's coming to mind. I want something that's very fluid on pen to paper to do this and I find the pilot works well. Now, one of the pieces I wanted to develop a uh, holder for these. I have quite a collection of these and so I wanted something where they sat on my desk so they were easy to get because one of the things I also do is kind of color code especially if I'm doing a room layout or something like that. I like to use different colors for different objects so I wanted to have them handy. So I sat forward over here as you can see defining the organic shape. Now once I get the organic shape done, what I like to then do is jump over and define what my object is. What are the physical definitions of my object? And I gather them all here. Now the other thing I like to also do is gather my objectives. Now I start my objectives first in this whole design process, but I don't finish it until the very end. Because as I'm going through my sketching or my physical dimensioning, these may change. So this is always a work in progress until the final product is over here is created. Once I've reached this point, what I do is I then jump into uh, either Fusion 360, OpenSCAD, or some other design program to really begin to realize the product. Now I have my math all worked out. You can see it here. So I, I've dimensioned it out because one of the things I forgot to mention early on, I like to use graph paper for this to give me basic ratios. And I usually try to design to scale. And you'll notice the numbers up here. And I use that sort of as a reference marker of scale in my process. Now what I did is I took this organic shape and I jumped into Fusion 360. Once I jumped into Fusion 360, I used lines and arcs to lay this out and then I hit the offset command. Now something unexpected happened and this is my uh, first tip is unexpected is good or can be good. So in this case my result looked more like this than obviously the straight up S because of the way the offset command handled the spacing between the two S's. I happen to like this. So I gave it a big thumbs up and I kept this part of the design rather than going with my original. So one of the key tips, well, look out for the unexpected because a lot of times it's what you don't know is what you want to know. And I think this is the case. What do you think? Does this look better than this? I personally thought so, so I went with it. Another big tip is usage of space. I wanted to keep this as small as possible. So what I did is I utilized what I call airline seating in the placement of this, these pens. So, so what is airline seating, you might ask? Well, airline seating is where you place the object very close to the edge of your working envelope. Now, if you've flown a lot like I have, you'll you know, know in economy class, there's basically, for the most part, a three-seat uh, configuration, two aisles and a middle seat. You never want to be in the middle seat. But in the aisle, you can lift up the aisle armrest and fold yourself into that extended working envelope outside of your seat. And this is pretty much what I'm doing here because now I can keep a smaller footprint but now it allows me to use that space on either side of the object. So you can see it's very slim but yet I can fold the clips to the outside if I need to. So this allows me to have different types of pens in here etc and still utilize the space more effectively. The other piece is the configuration because one of the things you'll notice I have seven pens in here. So I went with nine holes basically well 
First off, if I had more pens, I have more holes. But I like the configuration of the 313. I just like the looks, aesthetics. You know, typically I work in this seven pen configuration, so this is probably what it will be, unless I throw some other type of pen or something in here for convenience. Uh, however, this is something to look at when you're designing for the future. You know, you want to have some extra holes, but you also want to have what is the aesthetics? What will this look like sitting in your desk? Personally, I think this looks cool like this, more so than just being utilitarian. Because one of the things I believe is that even if the object is utilitarian in purpose, it should be artistic in design. And I think this achieves it. So I'll throw this out on Thingiverse. So if you want to go get it, if you like these pens, I'll have a link down below or out on Thingiverse too. I highly recommend them. Uh, go ahead, print this off for yourself. You can also scale this up or down. And I also put the... Uh, uh, a Fusion 360 file out there too. So if you want to change it, hey, be my guest. See what you can come up with. So with that, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did and took away some tips, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get the parens. And Swag Shop's in the corner. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we design something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.